Okay, so in the previous video we made this uh, circuit I sent it to Wouter and uh, I have been probing around on the G7000 video pack and the signals are very weak so, but I th think they get larger when we disconnect the uh, modulator because the modulator has uh, probably loaded the signal so uh, but still it's small, so that's what this is uh, circuit is going to help us with help us with. So yeah, so and there's another page called um Cool Retro Projects. Um, and then let's go back. Yeah, it has this board, so you can buy it. And uh, it, it looks like the same board as I have. It ha has all the same wires. 5 volt, ground in and out. And uh, audio in and out and video in and out. So, the thing is that this uh, mod is for G7000. Uh, maybe this was for G7000. But the <laughs> PDF, the installation guide, is for both systems. So, yeah. So, you have to, it's this circuit here, so you have to scroll down past the Odyssey 2 and then get to the G7000 that's the one you are in, installing in it anyway and the circuits wasn't the same for the two models, so the mod circuit so here you can see the power supply, the motherboard and here you have the video circuits, so we can't really access anything here without removing this cover but we are not going to re remove the cover desolder four wires from the RF box then cut desolder the black wire shown in the second photo is the ground wire going to RF box so uh, initially I thought we had to use that one but it is necessary to cut that wire to be able to remove this completely. You don't really have to remove it, you can let it stay in there, no problem. Yes, uh, this is a little bit misleading. They are talking about ground in, video in, audio in, but it's actually an output port. So these are output signals. They're going to the mod board and then from the mod board to the output ports composite connections. So we are going to attach our composite mod here and there's something I just don't like that well about this uh, instruction is that he soldered the mod into the case of the motherboard and the problem with that is that uh, the second case has all the ports top cover, bottom cover, they are connected together with wires and uh, you can't pull them apart, that's the problem because initially you could do that but with uh, this mod you can't so what I'm suggesting is that you put this um, modification inside the bottom cover and then you have already this connector up here Right, so if you want to remove the bottom cover, you can just just detach this and then you can remove the cover. So here by the window on my speaker you can see the modification board. The red is 5 volt and ground is black, as expect as you would expect. And then you have white on the left there. No, it's uh, grey actually. So that's the audio. And then it's audio out on white, and then you have video in on green, and video out on yellow. So, so I'm going to do a little test, and um, what I do is I uh, try to see if there's any short circuits to ground. So I put one on the ground, then, and I try the other probe. On the other, so you see, there's nine and a half k input resistance, so that's great. Then on this one, we have 
Yeah, mega ohms. And on the audio, yeah, we have uh, 4.4 kilo ohms. Right, so no, no so short circuits, so that's great, so we don't blow up anything. You can see the video pack has been opened, so this is the bottom cover. And the top covers, it goes over like this. So I just folded it this way. And you can see some marks there in the middle. I think that's from the box here. And as discussed, we will mount it on the bottom case. So I was thinking maybe putting it over here. And then I will just put these wires over to the uh, connectors that I have over here. So, let's start by removing the connector and then desolder these contacts. Oh, what the heck, let's just cut it out. And waiting for the solder iron to heat up. Um, uh, yeah. Alright. Okay, this one I'll just cut here. There you have your wire. Don't need that one. So maybe I should take some dust out also. So before you do solder anything, get some uh, heat shrink tubing and thread them down here. Okay, so we had the unconventional color coding over there. So I have ordered these wires in this particular sequence. Uh, we have 5 volt on mine or the mod board. And uh, that's the brown, and then you have ground on yellow, or light brown. The red is video, and and black is audio, Always goes to the grey, so. So let's do that. Yeah, also I put some heat shrinks uh, here now, to be pulled over later. But I also had an extra, because I split the wires too long down on the cable. <laughs> this is how I did it. I took the stiff one, the single core one and then I wrapped the uh, multi-core wire around it and then I dipped some flux onto it and then soldered it together so I don't know if that's the best way of doing it so and the purpose of the heat shrink is of course to isolate but it is also um, to give it some uh, um, strain relief such that when you move the cable it will uh, provide some stiffness over the solder joint. Actually I think it maybe it's better to solder by uh, putting tin on each wire and then holding them next to each other and then solder them together. So yeah, maybe I'll do that instead so I don't get that uh, kink. The What's important is that, uh, let me remove them again, that both points are heated at the same time. So, and also you need to expect, inspect that I have a good connection and uh, this looks okay though. I don't like this part down there. I think I'm going to cut it so it doesn't go through the heat shrink. Okay, that looks much better, doesn't it? So, yeah. Okay, so I have it connected up here. And it's working. So, there you go. Booting my machine because I'm going to connect the probes just to have a look. So, there's no more fuss on the screen that we had on the RF. Um, yeah, when you start the game, you will see some uh, jail bars, but it's not much. Let's see. Oh, there you see them. Or they are not really bars; they are dotted lines. I hope you, hope you can live with that. It's down in the uh, <coughs> dark area, so it's supposed to be like this anyway. 
So yeah. I'm very happy with this. So there you see the sync bows for the horizontal line and then the color burst. So it seems fine. Um here is the zero volt. So I have one volt per division, so we have one volt. <coughs> it's about one and a half volt of uh, DC offset. So, but the TV doesn't seem to uh, co uh, complain about that. But I was hoping to see this value be even lower. And also, this uh, signal. I switch switch it on again. You can see that it's about. Uh, 1 volt peak to peak when it's not loaded so I think that's correct um, the DC level has dropped to about 0.7 volts and the peak to peak is uh, half volt so let's see if I can find some hotspots They are fine, so okay, I have the green one on the input and the yellow on the output and you can see it's not exactly two times uh, amplification. Well, it is, but uh, now it's loaded, so let's unload it. Okay, I have disconnected and now you can see it's more than twice amplification. the setting is 500 millivolt per division so that's about yeah, uh, a volt peak to peak on the yellow so yeah, that's great so if you're not familiar with composite the thing is that you have it's difficult to work with this scope anyway but uh, you have the sync pulse and then you have your scan line and um, the 4 megahertz on PAL uh, signal coming here that's the color information so the phase in in relation to the burst will then uh, tell you which color which color it is so here you can see there's no color and also that one is in the middle of the scan line almost and what's that yeah, that's the white T there, you can see. So that one has no color information, so theref therefore there's just a square. And the reason why I wanted to do this was uh, I wanted to see how good the slopes were. So it looks pretty good. Like very steep, there's no ringing, just boom, straight up, does its work, boom, down again. So yeah, so I'm happy with this. Uh, just for experimentation, I have connected a uh, cap oh, uh, a pop meter up here, and the reason for that, I want to control that uh, DC bias level because if I decrease the resistance here or connect more in parallel anyway, this point will be dragged down more. And therefore, this point will be dragged down and also the output. So now it's already has come down and I have put the, um, the ground level down there. And now if I start winding you can see that they I can get it down to zero volts. And actually the picture gets a bit brighter. I don't know if you can see this. Let me try and adjust. There you can see. It's a little bit brighter. So there are some improvements to this circuit, but it works well out of the box. So yeah, I think maybe the design is like this because uh, some transistors may uh, work in that way that they. Uh, this uh, level here m might not be in the correct um, DC offset so by setting it a bit higher 
it will be uh, have some margin for errors so okay so the colors uh, was a bit brighter when I uh, wind it down to zero yes however if I go further you can see what happens <laughs> oops Okay, another thing I'm testing is uh, the pot over R5, and uh, that's that one. And R5 is the feedback resistor, or one of them. So if you adjust that, you should get a, a larger signal. So if I do that, you can see it gets a bit larger, but at the same time. It also um, the DC level is going up, so that's not good. So you can see what happens. It blanks out. So about there. So if I had uh, the connection I had before, so I could uh, lower the DC level. Maybe I could get something more, but. Uh, as you can see it's not doing very much so yeah what I was uh, meaning to say was that uh, increasing the uh, amplification didn't do much so or I don't think it will do much anyway so yeah I'm happy with, with what is what so um, I just had a thought um, because I increased the amplification nothing really happened on the screen I think I wonder if the reason for that is uh, because uh, the levels are always related to the input levels. Maybe they are normalizing the. Maybe the TV is normalizing it. So if the amplitude here increases, so will also this uh, black reference or back porch, I think it's called. Uh, so therefore, it will always be. Uh, white will be white and black will be black. So even if the amplitude has changed overall, not sure. Please comment if you know more about it. Yes, thinking maybe mounting it there, and the reason is because I have misjudged the length of the cable, and especially you see the gray one at the down, the bottom side of the board there. It doesn't have the same distance as all the other wires uh, because it's routed a bit longer in on the board. So, uh, therefore, I think I will set it there, right next to the ports. There, it should be possible to open the case like this. It will be sitting like this then. Then you open the case, it will be sitting like this. And then to get the case off, you can just pull out here. I removed the rest of the cover, or the top cover, and I have the button cover here. And then the glue gun, the iron, so let's go. Okay, uh, put glue underneath, but... Uh, Oh, ideally I should have glued it flat, but you see, it's not that easy because this cable isn't long enough. Oh, that's all silly. So, so I have six and a half millimeter drill. Seems all right. Maybe a bit small. Maybe exact. I will use it. It's the biggest one I have. This is how I did it. I didn't have the proper the proper size of drill, so used what was it? Six and a half. Should have used seven or eight. So I just took these pliers and made the hole bigger. 
So I did that off camera. Also, I have to empty the camera now. So, <laughs> and also again, <laughs> cables are too short. So therefore, I put the uh, connector next to this one. So we'll sort of solder it now. Okay, so there it is. Can get in close. See how I connected those two grounds together. And this one sits really hard, so yeah, don't worry about that one. There we go. It's the wrong color code. Now. This is uh, <laughs> supposed to be yellow, and white is always left mono. So, so this one goes over here. You can see there's not much cable left, so we gotta help it a little bit. Then it should be. There. So now let's see what happens to the cables when we turn it around. So, and we can see. Oh, we can open it this way. Right. You can see there's the power supply. There's the board. The wire stays there. I think it's fine. Just could close it up and see if it works. And there you go. I'm connected. Press one. Game starts. We don't only one hand. I don't understand how this works because when I keep moving, you can see the beam doesn't go where I want it to go. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching. And that was interesting. Definitely use a larger bore than eight millimeters. Uh, ensure that they have enough cable length. So So I bought this game I may have shown you before. Number 44 from a guy on eBay. I think Water played that also on his channel. So cheers from Transylvania. Not bad. Can get focus. Okay, so you can see some fuss. Maybe the uh, 
the YouTube will uh, re remove some of this when I upload it, but um, you can see there's a lot of digital noise going on there. So. Alright, thank you for watching. Goodbye. If you have any questions, just leave them below.